So this weekend, my wife and I made a little bit of time to get work on our Jawa robes done, and other than getting the lengths adjusted properly and the generic weathering on the sleeves and hems and stuff like that, the robes are done. Which means now all we have left is the hood and the mask, the boots, the bandoliers, the blasters. Okay, we got a lot of stuff left to do, but we got something done, at least, finally. Uh, we're going to try and have these ready for Dragon Con 2018, even though we've already got costumes for that. Uh, and then we got a couple of small local cons that we may try and troop. Uh, we don't know if we're going to seek Fible first approval with these or not, so we're just sort of doing whatever we feel like we want to do with the costumes instead of trying to abide by a set of regulations. Um, these are, like I said, mostly just going to be fun costumes. No, that, that won't work. No. No. I can't do that. It, no. Just, uh, just leave me alone. I'll figure this out. Okay? Thanks for the help. No. Okay. Bye. Man, Jawas, they can be so stubborn. So I took this massive roll of soiled brown monk's cloth that I was pretty sure was going to result in way too much material. Rolled it out on the floor in a 72-inch piece folded in half, so it was 144 inches total length. Uh, monk cloth shrinks, and it shrinks quite a bit. Most websites report about 15%, and that seems to be pretty accurate. We started with 144 inches, I'm 5'7", and we ended with 132 by the time we were done washing it. We stuck it in the washing machine on delicate, left it there for a few hours to soak, then took it out and hung it up for a day or two in our garage so that it could dry. Once the stuff was dry, we laid it out on the floor, all nice and neat, and took five measurements. Shoulders, chest, arm length, arm seam, and the total length of the rope. Alternatively, you can take the measurements from a t-shirt, but make sure you use one that fits appropriately. So when we measured, we decided we needed 60 inches of robe. So we took the measurements, laid the material out, folded over, so that the top seam will be where your shoulders go. Lined up all the edges as best we could, and then... No, no, no. Oh, come on. Don't tell them to do that. They lined the edges up again because, well, they got unlined up. Once we had them realigned, my wife cut the material along the bottom. She's much better with a pair of scissors than I am. And we started laying out where the neck and head areas were going to go. Okay, so now is where all the measurements start to get tricky. We measured out the center mark, and then measured 9 inches to either side for a total of 18 inches wide, which was what my shoulder width measurement was, and that's the edge of the shoulder seams. We then measured 4 inches from the center mark on each side, and we're going to cut a slit there, and that's the hole that your head goes through. Then 3 inches down from the left side of where your head goes through to give you an extra little bit of room to put your head through, um, that piece is going to end up with a snap eventually. We made reference center line marks down the entirety of the robe so that we were working from the center of the robe out because most of the outside of the robe is going to be cut away. We then measured down 10 inches, which was the measurement we, we found we needed for my shoulder seam. And that's going to be the, basically the bottom of the armpits. Then I drew some curves because they're not straight down, and that will be the area where the sleeves attached. From there, we joined the very bottom corners of the robe to the underarm area with chalk lines. And we're going to pin with safety pins. We found safety pins to be way more useful than trying to use this with straight pins. They just straight pins fell out really, really easily, and we ended up with them all over the place. But we ended up using safety pins, and safety pinned everything together to make it easier to cut. That way it shifted less while you were trying to maneuver and cut and things like that. As a side note, for some Jawas that are short enough, you can actually make this with the sleeves 
as a single piece attached to the robe. Unfortunately, by the time the monk cloth was done shrinking, we were both just tall enough that they weren't the sleeves weren't going to cover our arms the, properly that way. And so we ended up having to make separate sleeves. So we ended up with not as much extra material as we thought we were going to. I took a piece of paper and drew out the curves so that I could transfer that to the cloth when I cut the sleeves out. And it just thought it, it might make it a little easier to line it up. I cut the neck out and then cut the seam where my head's going to go through. The arm length measurements was 25 inches. The material after shrinking was 52, I think it was. So we had 26 inches to work with. So we basically folded the monk cloth over, traced the curves where they meet the arms, the shoulder seams, and split the material right down the middle. Uh, we ended up with 25 and 3 quarters or something like that on each sleeve, which might be a little short, but I think we're going to stick with it. We safety pinned the sleeves together and then cut them out. Now, I'm going to take a second to remind everybody that monk cloth falls apart remarkably easily. Uh, it frays very quickly. So when my wife was sewing this together, she wanted to make sure that there was beefy, durable seams. So instead of leaving quarter, maybe half an inch on a lot of the places where the material came together, she actually left an inch. And then she used a combination of a zigzag and a straight stitch to, to reinforce everything. This part's a little tricky and important. I put the robe on and she pulled the sleeve up on top and started at the center of the shoulder and safety pinned her way down to the underneath the arm area. It's important that you get this straight or the sleeves won't line up. Once she had the sleeves pinned on and was certain they were where they needed to be, she put the thing on the sewing machine and sewed reinforcement stitches around the cuffs of the sleeves. Now, you're going to want some fraying and weathering around the glove area, so don't sew the reinforcement stitch right on the edge. You want to leave it back, I don't know, I, I think she left an inch, inch and a half to allow a little bit of fraying. Then she did the same thing around the neck. Once she had the reinforcement areas done, she sewed the the shoulder seams from front to back but not underneath the arms with a straight stitch and then went through and reinforced that with a zigzag stitch. Again, these are great big heavy durable areas. They're going to make a lot of wear and tear putting the thing off and on and stuff. So you want to make sure that they don't fall apart. And she used a very heavy duty thread that when she did this. And in this clip you can see the sleeves are sewn on but the robe is open from armpit to floor. Next is to sew the seam starting at the bottom all the way up. And once again we safety pinned it and then sewed from cuff to hem. And she started with a single stitch up the entire length of one side or both sides. And then once she had both sides single stitch, she switched the machine over to the nice zigzag and proceeded to reinforce the entire seam all the way from the bottom up to the arm. We then got a couple of these small discrete little snaps and she hand sewed them in the area of the neck and that'll close up that neck area once it, and it'll be covered with the hood. No, no, it's not finished yet. Well, of course it looks dumb. It doesn't have a hood yet. It'll look better as soon as I'm done. No, I'm not throwing it all away and starting all over again. I'm just going to leave it like it is. 